say you likely heard about the Fio BTR15, this one, and you likely heard about DAC amps. Well, it is time for the biggest, baddest DAC amp that I've seen in 2023. This is the Fio Q15. This one has Bluetooth abilities, which are quite good by the way. It is a DAC amp with a lot of driving power. It costs 399 US dollars and yet it can manage to be better than some desktop DAC amps. For example, it can compete head to head with Hyphiman EF400 with GDS Labs, Element 3 Mark II Boosted and other big bad boys. So let's see what Fio did with this one because they did something quite right. For 399 US dollars, it looks like a smartphone, handles almost like a smartphone, it is a bit larger than a smartphone, especially thicker, it is shorter and narrower than a smartphone. This is it against the Samsung S23 Ultra. It can be placed next to a smartphone, but for example, when placing it against the S23 Ultra, it covers some of the cameras. So I would either use a silicon pad between them or when placing it next to a smartphone, I would actually want to use cables and I would use a longer cable and keep this one in a pocket. This one is interesting. It is quite interesting to say the least. It is mainly made to be used as a USB dock because it's quite big and quite inconvenient to carry around. I do carry it around and I find it more convenient than most DAC amps, but still it's a bit large and I don't want to impose that this is the way to use it for most people. So I have a switch like the one on BTR15 where we can set the phone mode on and off and setting the phone mode to on will use only its internal battery while setting it on off will keep it charging from the USB input. It has a desktop mode which can be set on and off which is once again related to battery. We have a coaxial input which is protected by a little silicon cap and we have a USB input. There is a separate power input if you have a cleaner power source, for example, a battery where it will be even cleaner than using the USB input for both charging and data, but you can use the USB input for both. At the top of the unit, we have the 4.4 millimeter balanced headphone output, the 3.5 millimeters single-ended headphone output, and the volume wheel. You can press on the volume wheel to browse the menus, but you have to use the little button on the side to turn it on and off. And that can be a handful at first. I didn't know about the side button. It seems to reset at every single turn on, whether it is set in Chinese or English, which I don't know if it is intentional or if this is some kind of beta firmware. I have not updated the firmware yet. We can set it to English quite easily. It has an LED ring around the volume wheel, which can help you locate it in full darkness. You can set the gain to low, medium, high, or super high. At super high levels, it tends to have a slightly higher distortion, but the dynamic range, the precision, and the amount of power it has are considerably better. So I would keep it either at high or super high, depending on what pairs best with your headphones or EMs. The balanced output can be set to be line out or headphone output. The line out volume can be either fixed or adjustable, which I think is pretty nice because for some speakers you will need to have this adjustable. The maximum volume can be limited if you don't want to ever risk burning your ears or your headphones or your EMs. You can have the ultra high gain to auto enable or to be manually enabled. So far it has reset with every single time I turned it on, you'll have to go through those menus every single time, although I am pretty fairly sure this is a beta firmware and that will be corrected in the full firmware. It has multiple filters, although they don't do that much as we are used from filters. You can set the display to be brighter or dimmer and you can see it is pretty bright at its maximum level. You can set the screen timeout, so the time it takes for the screen to turn off between 30 minutes and a few seconds, for example 15 seconds. It has an idle time, so the time it takes for it to not receive any signal to turn off, which can be set to off to 10 or 30 minutes. You can rotate the screen, which I think may be useful because since the headphone outputs are at the top right now and you'll be using this like this with the headphone jacks towards you, if you are using it as a desktop DAC amp, you will need the screen to be rotated. You can set the USB audio to be either UAC 1 or 2. The UAC 1 will be compatible with all sources, including consoles such as PlayStation, Nintendo Switch or Xbox or basically any other source, and USB 2.0, which will be compatible mostly with computers, although 1.0 is compatible with computers as well. You can use a driver found on the FIO website if you want to set the buffer to be larger or smaller to alleviate problems if you are experiencing dropouts. For example, if your computer isn't fast enough to process sound in real time, 
Although on the USB DAC, I have noticed no USB DAC delay. There is a parametric equalizer that we can enable where you can even define some profiles, which can be enabled to be system-wide even when it is used as a USB DAC. For example, if you have some bright headphones and if you want them to be bassier, you can enable the parametric equalizer and have a bassier profile applied even to the USB DAC output, which is useful rare and well implemented by Fio. You can set the input to be either USB, coaxial or Bluetooth. Over the Bluetooth input, you'll have no delay that I can notice. It can be used with an LDAC or APTX HD protocol. It quickly pairs with your smartphone and you have those playback buttons on the side that are quite handy. Even if you are using it in the USB DAC mode, your computer should be able to notice it and for you to control the music playback from the buttons. That being said, I prefer using my keyboard or my computer for that. Now with a unit this large, it is portable for some, a good desktop unit for most, and not the best Bluetooth unit for most, but an excellent Bluetooth unit for some. To expand, I find that the Fio BTR15 is excellent for EMs, like I love it to bits. I find it quite handy, quite convenient to use, and it sounds awesome. But the Fio Q15 is much better when I have to drive some large headphones. And speaking of large headphones, not only is this the largest, most convenient headphone to use with the Fio Q15, but it has such a beautiful sound with it. This is the Hyphiman Heshi 1000 Special Edition or SA. This one has a ton of driving power and it is so good at driving those that I personally found that I prefer the sound of the Fio Q15 and sometimes this can drive those better even than Hyphiman's EF600. Now, that was surprising. I was not expecting this to be the case, but I found that the Fio Q15 has better dynamics, a more punchy sound, a bassier sound actually with more substance, more low end and more punchiness, more control in the bass, better bass, better treble, more sparkle in the treble and a more dynamic sound. I was quite surprised. This is why I'm excited to do today's video review. I think that this will be a perfect purchase for many, many, many people. It doesn't have the balanced XLR outputs of Fio K9 Pro. Fio K9 Pro will have a place for those that only need the desktop usage. But the Fio Q15 is really tiny, really handy and really powerful. So much driving power and such a good overall operation. This one does have a battery inside so it can be used portably, although the battery life wouldn't last more than eight hours if you are using the balanced output and the high driving volume. I would use the Fio Q15 with the Hyphiman HA1000 Special Edition and I would be using it more right now if it wasn't raining for a few weeks in Romania. So I didn't go outdoors with the pairing yet, but I did use them indoors via Bluetooth or via the wired connection. It actually has a very strong Bluetooth connection. It seems to be less dynamically compressed than most Bluetooth receivers. Although I do think that Fio BTR15 is the sweet spot if you need to use Bluetooth. Like th that one is the smallest yet the most powerful unit available. Fio Q15 has the Bluetooth as an extra. It sounds quite good over it, but it's not the way it was meant to be used. There is so much competition around the 400 US dollars price point that it is hard to pick just one competitor. For example, we have the Palab M1 Mini and M1 Mini is excellent in its own right. It sounds smoother, warmer and fuller than the Fio Q15, but Fio Q15 has better driving power, more control at high volumes and a cleaner, better controlled bass with lower distortion. Palab M1 Mini tends to have a smoother treble, while Fio Q15 has a stronger, brighter treble. I think that Fio Q15 is better at driving very hard to drive headphones. And this one has a battery. It can be used from its own battery. It doesn't have to eat your smartphone or your computer's or laptop's battery. While Palab M1 Mini doesn't have an internal battery and that can be an inconvenience. Fio Q15, tends to sound the most dynamic, most punchy of the Bluetooth or the USB DACs in the price range. For example, even comparing it with IFI XDSD or IFI IDSD Black Label, the Fio Q15 has the best overall bass extension. It tends to have the strongest, punchiest bass, most extension, most powerful bass. It has such a good punch and a good expression of the sub lows. And at the same time, it keeps those controlled distortion free, there is no fatigue when listening with the Fio Q15 and at the same time it has a pretty natural mid-range with no uneven peaks or dips, it doesn't have a nasal sound for example. I did notice that some DACAMs can have a slightly nasal sound, well this one doesn't have that problem. The treble of the Fio Q15 is brighter, more sparkly, more airy, 
more precise and more detailed than most of the USB DACAMs in the price range. For example, it has a brighter yet more natural treble in the Fio XDSD. XDSD tends to be quite bright sounding, but the treble tends to be a bit unnatural at times, so at Fio Q15 tends to sound brighter yet at the same time more natural. The treble tends to have the metallic sound where it is supposed to be and to sound more airy where it should be, more splashy when the song is recorded as such, while few XDSD tends to be splashy all the times, but it cannot really reproduce that metallic sound when it has to. Fio Q15 is better at that, so it would be better to be used in a studio experience where you need things to be as precise as possible. I tend to appreciate that because recreating the music as it was recorded and as it was supposed to sound is the main purpose for which we are grabbing such a pricey and typically such a high-end duck arm. You may not need such a pricey and high-end that come. And let's be honest, this one is for the more die-hard audiophiles out there. If you don't need this, Fio BTR15 is still an excellent option. Less driving power, but you may not have the Hyphiman HA1000 special edition with you or even Hyphiman Arai Organic or other hard-to-drive headphones. Situation in which the Fio BTR15 may be a bit overkill, but if you have them and if you want to bring them to the ultimate level, well, with a portable that come, the Fio BTR15 is pretty much perfect. Thank you so much for watching, I hope that you will share this video with your friends, subscribe to the channel, like this video if you find it enjoyable, and also I hope you will have a lot of fun out there. I have purchased links in the video description saved for you to give you the best price at this moment. Thank you so much for watching and I hope we we'll see each other really soon. Bye!